Okay, we're in Microsoft Excel and we want to create a calendar using a single formula. So if I change the month and the year, you can see that these calendars are dynamic. And as I said, these are created using a single formula and I've got three versions of that formula. The first version looks like this. Lots of nested functions and brackets. The second version of the formula looks like this. It's a lot easier to read because it's using the let function. And the third version of the formula is even simpler because we're using lambda. So I'm going to show you how to create all three versions of this formula. To start with, we're going to take the formula apart step by step, and then we'll combine all those steps into a single formula. Now I'll just change the month and the date to the current month and date. Now the first thing we need to do is return the first day of this month. So we need a way of converting July to essentially seven, because it's the seventh month of the year. And the way we can do that is with a function called date value. So what I do is I point at this month and I concatenate it with one and that will return a number. Now that number is actually equivalent to the 1st of July, 2001. Now we're not really interested in the year or the day, just the month. So we need to extract the month part of that date. which is seven. Then we use the date function to return the first of that month in this specific year. So the year we have in J4, comma, the month is returned by this formula, and we want to return the first day of the month. So we just put a one in there. Now the next thing we need to do is to return the number of days in this month. And we can do that with a function called end of month. End of month returns the serial number of the last day of the month. So there's my start date. If I want to return the last day of the month for the current month, then in the month's argument, I put a zero. So all that's done is return the last day of that month. Now I only want the day portion of that date. So to extract the day, I use the day function. Next, I need to work out what weekday this first day of the month is. Is it a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc.? And I can do that using weekday. So my serial number is the first day of the month. And then the return type I'm going to use is two, where Monday is equal to one, Sunday is seven. So this tells me that the 1st of July is a Tuesday, which it is this year. Now, next I need a grid of numbers for my calendar. And we can produce that grid of numbers using the sequence function. Now, the maximum number of rows I'm gonna need is six, and I'm gonna need seven columns for the seven days of the week. And my start number, well, this is where I need to think about where the first of the month is going to appear. Now, the maths of this is two minus the result that I've calculated here for the weekday of the first of the month. So if I press enter, you can see that I'm getting the first on a Tuesday, which is what I want. Now, I need to filter out or exclude any numbers less than one and over the number of days in that month, so from 32 onwards. Now I'm gonna do that using an if statement. And the logical test basically needs to state that the value needs to be greater than zero and less than or equal to the last day of the month. Now, because I've got two tests, I'm gonna use two sets of brackets. The first test is, is the number greater than zero? And because this is AND criteria, I use a multiplication symbol. And then the second test is, is the number less than or equal to the number of days in the month? Now, if both of those tests are met, then I want to return the number. 
otherwise I want to return an empty text string. And I end up with the calendar for the specified month and year. Now obviously I've had to create many different formulas here to get to this point. So how do I combine these all in one formula? Right, so we'll now move on to the first formula, first single formula that creates our calendar for us. And I'm going to start that by copying this if statement and pasting it in here. Now you can see here that I'm referring to the formula in A7 three times. So what I'm going to do is take this sequence formula and copy it and paste it into this if statement wherever I see it referring to cell A7. So now if I look at the formula, Wherever I'm referring to A5, I need to copy in the formula that is currently in A5. Next, wherever I'm referring to A4, I need to copy in the formula that's in A4. And lastly, wherever I'm referring to A3 in my formula, I need to copy in the formula that's currently in A3. So now if I deleted all of these formulas, this still works because I'm no longer relying on the individual formulas in this part of the sheet. Now this formula works, but it is quite long. It's got many nested levels, many nested functions. Is there a cleaner way of creating this formula? Well, this is where we can look at the let function. Now I am eventually going to include the day headings in the formula. So the formula will even produce the day headings, but for the moment, we'll just copy them in here. And we're using let. Now with let, what I like to do is to come down on a new line for each part of the formula. So I can use Alt Enter to do that. Now what we can do is reuse parts of our formula by naming each part of it. So the first part of our formula is the formula for the first day of the month. So we give it a name. So I'll just call this first day, comma. And then we have to specify a value for that name. So at the moment, I'm just going to point at the formula that we've placed here in A3. We'll eventually replace that with the actual formula in A3. So then I'm going to come down on a new line again, Alt Enter. And we now need a formula for the number of days in the month. And that formula is here in A4, comma. And I'm going to come down on a new line. And now we need to include the weekday of the first day of the month. So I'll just call this first of month. And that's calculated here. And then another new line. And we need a grid of numbers. And that's calculated here in A7. And I need to refer to the whole array, comma. And then another new line. We need to return the numbers for the current month. So I'll call this month numbers. And that's calculated here in A15. And I'm referring to the whole array. So then I put another comma in and I'm going to come down on a new line again. And I need to tell that what to return. So we want to return the month numbers. Alt enter again, close the bracket for let, press enter, and I get the same result as I was getting up here. Now we've not quite finished here because currently we're referring to the formulas that we created here in column A. So we need to replace those cell references with the formulas. So I'm going to take this first formula, copy it, paste it over our reference to A3. And then I'm going to do the same for this formula. 
and I'm going to paste it over our reference to A4. However, it refers to A3, but the result for A3 has been calculated here. So what I do is I replace A3 with the name we gave that part of the calculation first day. So now I'm going to copy this part of the formula that calculates the weekday. Go back to my let and paste over the reference to A5. But A5 also refers to A3, which is where we were calculating the first day of the month. So I just put first day in there. Now the grid of numbers. So we'll copy that. And that replaces our reference to A7. But here we're referring to A5, and A5 was the weekday of the first of the month. And we called that first of month. And then lastly, we've got our numbers for the current month. This if statement, which we can now replace our reference to A15 with. And this refers to A7, which is the grid of numbers. So I can just write grid of numbers in each of these references to A7. Also, we have a reference to A4. Now, A4 was the number of days in the month. So you to replace that with that name. And then if I press enter, we have the correct result. And again, I could delete all these because we're no longer reliant on these workings. So if we compare these two formulas, let with our original formula, I think you would agree that this is a lot cleaner and easier to read. Now I want to incorporate the days of the week across the top within our formula. Now over here, I'll show you how to create the days of the week. We're going to utilize the sequence function. So sequence will just return an array of numbers. So how many rows do we want? A single row. And how many columns within that row? Seven columns for the seven days of the week. Now, if I close the bracket, that returns one through to seven. But what I want to do is return Monday through to Sunday. Now, to convert those numbers to the days of the week, I can use the text function. So the value is returned by sequence. And the format that I want to apply is DDD, which will return an abbreviated day of the week. Now, that's returning Sunday through to Saturday. I want Monday through to Sunday. So all I need to do is add one to my sequence result and I get Monday through to Sunday. Now I can take that formula, copy it, and now incorporate it in my let formula. So I'm gonna get rid of month numbers there and I'm gonna create a name called day headings, comma, and then paste in my text sequence formula, comma, then come down on a new line. And what I need to do is stack the day headings on top of the result of month numbers. And I can do that using VStack. So that would be day headings, comma, month numbers. And if I press enter, you can see I've now got the day headings at the top there. So now I can get rid of these day headings that I've manually typed in, move this formula up into that row, reapply some of the formatting, and it's good to go. I can delete this now. So how can I improve this even more, reduce it to a much simpler formula? Well, this is where I can use Lambda. So to do this, I need to 
copy this let formula. And then I'm going to come down to this calendar and we're using Lambda. And what I need to do is create a name for the two inputs, month and year. So I'll call them month, comma, year. And then I need to specify my calculation. Essentially what I've done here is specify the two parameters. And now I need my calculation. So I'm going to come down on a new line and then paste in my let formula. Now I need to adjust this because at the moment I'm referring to the month and the year via the cell addresses. But actually these need to be replaced with the parameter names that I've created here. So J4 would be year and J2 would be month. Now I need another close bracket at the end here. And I'm going to get rid of this equal sign at the beginning of let, and then I'm going to press enter. Now it returns calc because we can't really use this Lambda formula directly within our spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is copy this or cut it. Then we go to the formulas tab on the ribbon. We go to name manager, then to new, and we're going to create a name for our new formula. We'll call it calendar. And in the refers to box, delete its current content and paste in our new formula. Click on close. So now if I type equals calendar, you can see it's prompting me for a month, comma, and then a year. Close the bracket, press enter, and it returns that calendar. And again, it's dynamic, responds to the month and the year that I choose from these drop-downs.